My name is Trey Mitchell. I've been training strawmen for 10 years now, and I'm from Lumberton, Texas. 7 a.m. here, just uh, heading to the church garage gym. You know, they just uh, gave me the space to store my equipment there. You know, uh, very blessed to have all the stuff that they've given me uh, to do to do my strawman stuff. Right. Welcome to the Church of Iron. <laughs> These are all my weights. I got most of them secondhand. You know, just uh, people cleaning out their garages that they don't need anymore. This is my one and only yoke right here. I've had it about eight years now. You know, and still it's beat up, but you know, I mean, still holding strong. You know, this was given to me by a strawman buddy. He he broke it, and he said, "You can have it as long as you you know you just have to fix it." And he's like, "Yeah, no problems." <laughs> These are all my stones here, you know, got my heaviest one over here, 550. I made it last year training for the, you know, the Atlas Stone world records, you know. This is my very first one, the cow patty stone. You can see, like, why we call it the cow patty, because it's so flat on one side and lumpy on the other. Kind of sits like a cow patty. <laughs> Me and my dad, we've made all our stones together in our backyard, and this was my very first one. We used, like, a exercise ball as the mold. <laughs> That's why it's so lumpy and misshapen, but you know, I made do with it as my very first stone and you know, I, you know, it's done me well, you know, being one of the best stone lifters in the world. I was 18 at the time, you know, just finished up uh, my senior year of football and I just thought like I needed to do something that keep me active and I was like, oh, let's see if I can get into strongman. Is that even possible? You know, just, I googled like uh, strongman competitions, you know, looked up local competitions. Closest ones are in Houston, about an hour and a half away. <laughs> we, me and my family, we woke up uh, early one morning for the competition and just drove down there right before it started. And, you know, I won the team division and it's just like, I fell in love with the sport from there. It's just like, let's see how far I can go. I want to try and become the world's strongest man. Training for the competition, I didn't really have, you know, all the equipment, like there was some stuff I could simulate in my, you know, backyard. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, it was just getting stronger and doing what I can to, be ready for the competition. I lived pretty much on a homestead farm and we had a, you know, some tractor tires. I'd get a chain, do some backwards sled drags with, with the chain wrapped around the tire and, you know, anything I could think of. Right here we got like my very first uh, pull-up bar. Just needed something to do pull-ups on. So we got this like piece of bar right here with a cable going through it attached to a country limb <laughs> yeah still holds me up you know being 360 pounds <laughs> here were my very first uh, farmer's handles you know made when I was in starting out you know yeah. Uh, yeah these were fence posts like metal fence posts that we cut up hold on to you know, a little galvanized so they wouldn't rust, but, you know, this is what I, yeah, here's the more bent one, you see, just weights just, you know, fell off and, you know, banged on it, bent them, bent them all to heck, <laughs> but yeah, uh, my very first farmer's handles, homemade. It's not about, you know, having the best piece of equipment. Obviously, you, it's great to have equipment, and I'll, I'm always excited when I get new. I'm able to afford new equipment, but it's just about being strong. Like, my first log I made by myself in high school, and I didn't get a professional one until after my first World's Strongest Man appearance. Like, I didn't start training with Tacky on Atlas Stones until last year. You know, you don't need every piece of equipment 
that in the world. I don't think that's straw man. Like straw man is like going to a competition, almost not knowing what you're gonna be doing. Almost like I, I do like to like, hey, you're doing a log press. Okay, let's do a log press. Like I don't need to know what brand of log, what's the diameter. It's just like, hey, you're doing log press. Be prepared for a log press. <laughs> My first appearance at uh, Wall Strong's Man was 2019. No one really believed I could, uh, you know, make the finals, let alone perform well. But you know, I had to believe in myself. So. You know, made the finals, played the Atlas Stone run in the finals, one of my heaviest runs, and it's just like, that's when the, you know, I proved to everybody that, uh, that I can be the world's strongest man, that's when they start taking me seriously. My second appearance in World Strongest Man was 2020. First event was the Farmer's Walk, and that just really opened my eyes that one of my worst events. And just I didn't make the finals, and coming off the high of the previous year, making the finals, doing well there, and then not even being able to go to my standard for you know the second year. I just used it as a learning experience, and used it as motivation to train harder and perform better in the new season of 2021. I got you know just underneath the podium at uh, Wolf Strongest Man. After that, winning the Brian Shaw Classic in August, and then coming in third in the. Arnold UK, which, you know, just was a good year for me. And coming in 2022, I don't plan on slowing down anytime soon.